In this video, I want to talk about a tool called SmartSizer. It's a tool that I created over a year ago. And since then, it has evolved into something slightly different, but still just as powerful. So I want to just take this video right here and kind of show you all the new features. And for this example, we have this composition right here. We have this Euchre Media text, and then we have a longer text and then an image just to show you that it works on text and also image as well, but video, you know, comps, that as well. So what does it do? On the surface, it basically uses these five buttons right here. So for example, let's say you're working on something and you want, uh, in this example, I only have like few layers in here, but what if you have like hundreds of layers? What if you wanted to size them all to the same width as this text right here? For example, I wanna take this text and this image and stretch it out to the width of this text. Now, naturally you would probably just do it like this, you know, stretch it out like that, move it and do this. I mean, that can take some time and uh, it's it's very frustrating, especially if you have a lot of different layers. So let me show you how you can do this quickly using Smart Sizer, but also another tool that I'm currently working on called Smart Anchor. So the first thing I would do, I would make sure the anchor is at the center. Well, for this one, I wanna keep it at the bottom right here. So I'm gonna use the Smart Anchor. So it's gonna be at the bottom. This one, let's make sure it's in the center. And that one, I wanna put the anchor point right here. So let's do the same thing here. All right, so then I can maybe move it up. You get the idea, you can design it how you want it to be. Maybe you wanna have the same kind of gap. All right, then, and again, I'm only using few layers, but you can only imagine if we had like a hundred layers or so. So then I would do this, I would select this and that one and whatever I select last, that's the layer that we're gonna grab the size from. So the width and the height. And so whatever you select last is very important. So then you can go to Smart Sizer and then you can say, hey, take the selection and then either fit the, you know, all selected layers to the width of the last selected layer like this. As you can see, this one will stretch it out. So it doesn't maintain the aspect ratio. It just stretches everything out. So that's very useful. Uh, let me undo this. Now that one will keep all of them the same height as your last selected layer like this. Boom. Obviously this one was the same height, but that one wasn't. So it adjusted. Let me undo this. This right here will do the same thing. It will adjust to the width, but it will also keep the aspect ratio of each selected layer. So for example, if I select this, do it like that. As you can see, it will stretch the image, everything, but this time the image is actually, is maintaining the aspect ratio, which is very helpful. So that's what that one does. Now, let me undo this. This one does the, the exact same thing, but it will adjust it to the height. So it, again, it will size it to the height, but then it will maintain the size uh, ratio like this one as well. And then the last one will basically make it the exact same size as your last selected layer. So it will stretch it to width and height. So it's gonna be the exact same size, which in some cases it might be very useful. So that's what Smart Sizer is in a nutshell. Now before I had, like when you clicked on these buttons, it would apply a code and uh, it just kind of got messy. So now it doesn't apply any code. It just does a straight based on selection. It doesn't, you know, it just changes the values to fit. Now it has other things as well. So let's say I've selected everything like this. It doesn't really matter what I, you know, maybe I guess, you have a certain order that you selected, but in here you can type what you want to do with this. It, it is in pixel value. So based on my selection, what if I want the width to be exactly 600 pixels and I want to stretch it to 600 pixels like this, boom. And again, it's going to give you everything, you know, it's going to fit, it's going to be the same width and it's going to be exactly 600 pixels in pixel value. And again, it doesn't apply any expressions. It will just size it like this, which is helpful. Now you can do the same thing and maybe maintain the aspect ratio, boom, like that. So that's very helpful. So you can also do margins. So for example, if I did this and maybe this one right here, I wanna size it down even more. So instead of 600, I'm just gonna set it to zero. I'm gonna say, hey, also add like a 20 pixel margin and maintain the aspect ratio. And it will kind of size it down. So if you're designing stuff and you want, for example, maybe you put this in here and you wanted to, you know, size down, but only like maybe 50 pixels, but keep the aspect ratio. And then it will do that. But if you have a bunch of them, let's say this right here, I mean, it fits, but you want to maybe, again, add some kind of margin like that, boom. So essentially this tool will help you from dragging it hand by hand and trying to match things. And it does speed up a lot of time. Obviously these button right here also can like reset things. If you type something in here, 
it will reset it. And I also have added, if you add anything like that's not a number, it will automatically reset it to zero. You can also use up and down arrow keys. You can use Alt key to go more precise, you know, Control key, Shift key. So it's the same concept as the uh, Smart Animator. And what else? Now, we also have this other button right here. It's kind of hidden. And it has some hidden features that are very useful. So for example, when you select a bunch of different layers, and if you click on this for the width, you can say, hey, give, you know, adjust everything based on the comp width. When you click that, it will type comp, it's a keyword. And if you press on stretch, it will stretch it to the width of the comp. So that can be very useful in some cases. Maybe you say comp width plus subtract like a 50 or like 100 pixel margin. So it's gonna stretch to the comp, but then have that margin. So that's that's very helpful in some cases. Uh, let me undo this. So let's see, what else does it have? You can say, grab the size of the uh, first selected layer, last selected layer, or uh, smallest layer. So right now it says minimum. And because of that, if I do fit to width, it will fit it to the smallest one. And in this case, the smallest one is this one right here. So let's see, yep, that works. And let's see what else. It also has the largest. So the largest one will be that one. You get the concept. So. Some of these keywords can be very helpful. I try to think of all kinds of different ways, but it is kind of hidden. So a lot of you might not even know about this one. So it's the same thing for width and height. And uh, But the one that I'm, I guess, focusing on more is this right here, code. Now, on the surface, these work just fine, but there's this code button, or essentially what it does, it does the same thing slightly, slightly different, but it applies an expression. And you might be wondering, like, why would you need that? Well. When you're creating Mogerts or rigging your composition using expressions, this can come in very handy. For example, let's do this. Um, let's say you wanted to size this text down to that one, but then also maintain the text to where like the text, if I type, it will not go past that width. So when you select the code and you say, hey, I adjust it to the width here like that, it will adjust it, but watch this. It will also do this. So if I type something, it will not go past that width. So I'll, I'll have to kind of explain more into like uh, exactly how useful this is. Obviously, it can be a bit problematic if you if you don't do expressions or if you know it, it can get messy if you don't know what you're doing. So this one, I'm, I was actually tempted to just completely take it out to where just let it be just this. But obviously I have this kind of feature in the first release. So I felt like I, I had to leave it in there. So, but again, essentially what this does, it converts a layer into a pixel value and it creates this pseudo effect where you can control the width and the size based on the pixel value, right? You can say, stretch it to both. You know, you can kind of stretch it to both or go with the uh, width only and you can adjust width, it will ignore the height. So anyway, Essentially what this button does, it converts uh, your layer from the scale value into a pixel value. That's that's what I did before. But now we have these buttons that if you don't have this one checked, it will do all the stuff you need even with pixels. But when you, cr when you click on that, it will apply an expression. And if you want to get rid of this expression, just select the layer, you know, all of them, and you can kind of boom, get rid of them. It'll get rid of the pseudo effect and all the expressions that it applied to the scale property. So that's what that one does. So for example, Sometimes this code can be useful. Let's say you brought, a, brought in like an image and you want to size it instead of like a scale value, right? You want to size it based on pixel value. So you would activate the code and then you say, hey, stretch this out to, to the width of this, I guess the, the width and the height of this image. And now this scale right here is taken over by this pseudo effect. So now we have width and height in pixel value. So you can, again, use it like this. You can uh, use it in your expressions and you can code with it. I think it's very helpful. All right, well, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you're not a part of our mentoring group, you should definitely join at ukramia.com slash community. It's a free Facebook group full of a lot of super knowledgeable people. They're very nice. It's a kind group. I mean, it's a mentoring group, which means that uh, people are there to either help others or get helped. So if you want to learn or if you want to teach someone, go to ukramedia.com community. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.